Did you know there's a type of faith that is dangerous to have, that Jesus himself condemns, and that God will never approve? But many people are going to walk up to the presence of the Lord with this faith in their hand, thinking that it's the ticket to heaven, but God's going to say, I don't approve of that faith. Depart from me. I never knew you. So make sure you pay attention because we're going to learn about the most dangerous type of faith, the most useless type of faith that a Christian can claim to have. Look what Jesus says here in the book of Matthew. But before I read the book of Matthew, I want to read you what the brother of Jesus, James, in chapter 2, verse 26 says. Look what James says about faith. Because just like today, back in those days, there was many people who just said, all I have to do is just say I believe in Jesus and I'm saved. And James became very upset at that because, of course, Jesus was his brother, but also he was a Christian that believed and walked by faith with the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he would hear people say, well, all I have to do is believe and just say I'm a Christian and I'm good. All I have to do is just say that I believe in Jesus and that he died on the cross and I'm good, I'm saved. That's all I have to do. James became very upset and he shares a lot about faith without works, but I want to focus in on what he says here. James chapter 2, verse 26, look what he says. For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. So James is saying, just like a body without a spirit is dead, so is faith without works. In other words, people are walking around with dead faith. Why? Because they say they believe in Jesus, but their lifestyle is not matching that they believe in Jesus. Now, this doesn't mean that people are saved by works. Of course not. Many times when teachings like this are being taught, people can confuse that and they can say, oh, he's saying or they're saying that you need to do works to be saved. No, no, no. Pay attention. That's not what we're saying. I'm not saying that you need to do something to be saved. I'm saying when somebody's saved, they start to do something. When somebody's saved, the proof is in their lifestyle. When somebody is saved, of course, they're not perfect. They're not flawless. But when somebody is saved, their desires change. The sins that they used to feel so comfortable and they didn't feel no remorse and they didn't feel no type of ill feeling about those sins. Now, because they're saved, even though they might have an error, even though they might have a flaw, now because they're saved, they no longer feel comfortable about it. They no longer feel good about it. I heard a pastor say this and I agree with it. He said, when Jesus saved you, he didn't make it to where you were never going to sin again. He made it to where you were never going to sin and feel good about it ever again. When you are saved and you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will no longer let you live in sin feeling good, feeling peacefully. Never. So when somebody is saved, James says, like the spirit apart from the body is dead. In other words, the body without the spirit is not life. He says that's the same way faith without works is dead. What's the most dangerous type of faith in the world? What's the type of faith that God does not approve? What's the type of faith that many people are going to be holding in their hand, walking up to heaven, thinking that it's going to be the ticket into heaven, but God is going to look at them and say, I don't know you. I don't approve of that faith. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. What type of faith is it? Dead faith. Faith that is just words, but faith that doesn't have the actions of the Holy Spirit pushing it. Now, remember, you're not going to be perfect. You're not going to be flawless. But a Christian, even though they fell, the Bible says the Lord will raise them back up seven times. The Bible tells a Christian, when you sin, when you fail the Lord, I write you these things so that you would not sin. But if you do sin, confess your sins, for Jesus is faithful and just to forgive you and wash you of all your sins. A Christian is not going to want to stay in the life that they used to live. A Christian is going to want to get up out of that sin. A Christian is not going to feel comfortable with sin. A Christian is going to want to get out of that sin. And if that's you, if you're in a sin and you don't feel comfortable then that's proof that the holy spirit is in your life and the holy spirit is pulling you back to jesus the holy spirit is drawing you back to that straight and narrow road and what we need to do as christians is confess our sins for jesus is faithful and just to forgive us our sins this is the most dangerous type of faith what type of faith the faith that is just words but doesn't have actions behind it God will not approve of that faith. And look what Jesus says here. It's one of the most terrifying scriptures in all the Bible. Well, I'm actually going to read two stories that Jesus gives. And these are the most terrifying verses in the whole Bible that a lot of people read and they're scared about them. But I want to tell you, you don't have to be scared about them. Jesus is speaking about these situations, these scenarios. He's giving us an inside look into the last days so that you and I won't have to end up like this. He's not telling you this to scare you. He's telling us this to save us. So let's read. 
And before I read, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I'm going to be posting five to six videos every single week, Lord willing. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe and turn on those notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. So subscribe and turn on those notifications. Now let's continue to read. Look at the type of faith that's dangerous, the type of faith that God does not approve of. But why is Jesus telling us this? Not so we can be condemned, but so that we won't walk in this dead faith. Look what he says here. Matthew 7, verse 21 through 27. He actually gives two stories back to back. Now let's pay very close attention to these two stories because Jesus himself is the one giving these two stories. So pay attention. He says this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, they're saying the right things. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So that's exactly what James was saying. The same way a body without a spirit is dead, that's the same way faith without works is dead. Jesus is saying the same exact thing. He said, not everyone who just says, it's not just about saying. This is not talking about a Christian with errors. This is not talking about a Christian with faults. This is not talking about a believer who's running the race but might still have failures, might still stumble. This is not talking about those people. This is talking about people who just say, well, I believe in Jesus. Well, I believe in the Son of God. I believe He died on the cross. I believe He resurrected on the third day. But they really don't believe it. They really don't accept it. He's saying, you can't just say something. You can't just say, I believe the light is red and then cross the light. You can't just say, I believe that's a stop sign and you never stop. If you really believe the light is red, you're going to stop. If you really believe that's a stop sign, you're going to stop. You can't just say something and then your actions not walk according with it. Jesus is saying not everyone who just says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But look what he says. But only those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. That's real faith when you're doing the will of the Father. And then he says this. On that day, what day? The day of judgment. He says, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord. Again, they're seeming spiritual. They have the right lingo. They're talking the talk and they're, 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 they're saying what they got to say, but they're not walking the walk. He said, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy? A, hey, they even had gifts of the Spirit. They even had the gifts. Many people are confused by that. How can they have those gifts? How can God use them to do those things, but they not be saved? Because let me tell you something. God gives graciously and God gives gifts. That's grace. We're saved by grace grace and God gives gifts by grace. But look what he's saying. I don't just want you to have a gift and depend on the gift thinking the gift is what is proving your salvation. He says, no. He says this, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Which literally means preaches. Did we not prophesy in your name? Cast out demons in your name? Oh, that's very popular nowadays. Everybody's casting out demons, right? Everybody's casting out demons nowadays. Did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. He said, I didn't know you. You weren't walking in my words. You were walking in lawlessness. What is lawlessness? Sin. He said, you didn't practice my word. You practice your own sinful desires. You never walked according to my word. I don't know you. Jesus said, if you say, Lord, Lord, that don't mean nothing. Only those who do the will of my Father. Now remember, this is not talking about a struggling believer. This is not talking about a believer that stumbles and gets back up. This is talking about people who just said, Lord, Lord, but never try to live for God. He tells them, that's not good enough. Just saying that you believe believe he is Lord. Lord doesn't mean anything. Are you obeying the words of the Father? Are you walking in the words of the Father? Now, right after this, Jesus gives another story back to back. Something about Jesus. He always loved to give confirmation. And then look what he says here. Verse 24 to 27. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew, beat against that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. How was the house founded on the rock? By hearing and doing, by hearing and practicing. When we hear and we practice, we are building on the rock. When we hear and we do, we are founding on the firm foundation. But then Jesus also speaks about people who hear and don't practice. Here it goes. This is the most dangerous type of faith. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a fool that built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Jesus said, do you want your house to last? Hear my words and practice them. Do you want your house to crash? Hear my words and don't practice them. Why is this a dangerous type of faith? Because many people are thinking, well, all I have to do is just say, Lord, Lord. All I have to do is just say, I believe in Jesus and I'm good. No, Jesus said, yes, you have to believe in me, but then you have to prove that you believe in me by practicing what I say. 
When somebody loves basketball, they're going to want to play basketball. When somebody loves football, they're going to want to play football. When somebody loves a sport, they're going to want to be involved in the sport, whether they watch it, whether they play it, whether they wear a uniform. They're going to want to be involved in whatever area of that sport it is because they love it. When somebody loves God, they're going to want to be involved in his works. They're going to want to be involved in his kingdom. This doesn't mean you're perfect. This doesn't mean you're flawless. No one is perfect. No one is flawless. But this means that you're a person. When you're saved, you're a person that wants to honor God. And you might stumble and you might fall, but you get back up and you continue to obey his words. But then there's people on the flip side who just say, oh, no, I believe in God. But they don't try to walk in his words at all. Jesus says that type of faith is like building on the sand. Your house will crash. But why is Jesus saying this? Because he wants our house to crash? No, because he wants us to build our lives on the rock. So that after the storm, after the floods, after the rain, after the wind, our house will still stand. I hope this video was a blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe and turn on those notifications because Lord willing, I'm going to be posting five to six videos every single week. So if you don't want to miss these videos, if they're an encouragement to your life, subscribe and turn on those notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel or for this video, you can do so by a feature that looks something like this. It's called Super Thanks. It's at the bottom of your screen by the subscribe button. Those are always a great blessing to my life. Those are always greatly appreciated. And also, there's a feature in my channel called Channel Memberships. The link is in my description. Channel members get special badges, special stickers every time they comment. It shows up by their name. And they also get access to archive videos on my channel. So if you're interested in that, become a channel member. The link is in my description. God bless you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing. And before you click off, make sure you watch one of these videos.